Well, that got exciting really quick. You made the boat start peeing. <laughs> Keep duking it out with them. River rats, there's a lot to be excited about. First off, I'm I'm alive, so you know, that's a good thing. Second off, I'm fishing. And then third, it's the first tournament of the first year that I'm gonna fish tournaments. That came out kind of weird. Anyway, we gotta figure out where the fish are at. So let's go. In this tournament, this is a big national level event. And I'm going to be fishing against some of the best cat fishermen in the country. At least by my estimation. So I guess if I do well, in my opinion, that puts me in those ranks. But I've never done well in an event like this, so right now I am not in those ranks. Yeah, this is a little off the wall, different than what everyone else is doing. And if it works, it'll be an advantage, and but nine times out of 10, or probably more likely 99 times out of 100, it doesn't work, but I wanna know. Anyway, I got some new rods and reels to try out. Mainly, uh, I mean, I like trying new stuff, I'm not gonna lie, but I'm looking for the ultimate bang for your buck big cat combo. I think they might be it, I'm not sure yet. They're Daiwa Wilderness medium heavy rods, seven and eight footers, and. Those are PC Fun Alios 400s, which I'm growing to like the big low profiles, a lot of power, compact package, but they're not tested because they're brand new. The reels have been tested. The reels have been put through their paces um, and I can give them the green light for sure, but the rods, I think they'll do well. I'm not sure, but they're new. So like, you know, you need to have the good mojo on the new rods and reels. So we'll put a little skipjack slime on them. Yeah, some scales. Okay. They're not new anymore. We'll probably give this an hour. We're running out of daylight. Probably just gonna camp in the boat, not because I necessarily need to fish all night for a tournament fishing perspective, but I don't want to drive around a bunch and burn any more gas than I have to. Did mark a absolute pile of fish in here doesn't mean they're catfish, but it's life. I'm a fan of catfishing where there is life. There's also a lot of stumps in here, which means there might be a lot of snags going down. Take them as they come, I suppose. All right, the plan is to go super duper slow. Um, so water's fairly chilly, it's like 50. Borderline's chillier than what I like for a moving bait presentation, but we're gonna give it a try. Especially because we're gonna be in here tonight. Or at least in this area. I 110% expect this not to work, but it's a box I need to check off and I wanna know. I did bring stuff for cooking, but there's a fish consumption advisory down in this area, so instead of catching fish and, and cooking fish, my plan, I got some back straps, some, some deer loins that I'm going to cook on a cast iron. Kind of craving fried fish, but uh, I will, you know, live to eat another day. Plus, I've, I definitely have the, the deer, you know, no guarantees on the fish. It's quiet, like really quiet. I think it'll be a good place to sleep out. 
I don't know if it'd be a good place to fish, but that's what we're here to find out. So far, it's looking like it's going to be one of the 99 times out of 100, not the one out of 100 type spot, type pattern, type whatever you want to call it. We'll see, though. We're definitely getting a nibble. But he's not pulling it down. It's either it's small, lethargic, or it's not even a catfish. Might be a gar. Or I just don't know. It's persistent, which makes me think it's a gar. Not gonna worry about it till he buries it. If he doesn't bury it, I'm not gonna worry about it. I don't think this is the answer, unfortunately. Um, we haven't caught any fish, but the big thing to me is that the water temp in here is 47, and in the main channel it's 52. So, yeah, you could probably could catch a fish in here, but are you gonna catch more fish and bigger fish than everyone else? Um, not betting on it, at least not right now. I bet at times this plays out, but I don't think this is one of them times. So yeah, we're running out of daylight. I'm tired of hanging out with all these pelicans. The pelicans are pretty cool. But yeah, I'm gonna find a spot to spend the evening. Deer steak sounds wonderful. I don't know if this spot is the answer, but I do know we'll give it some time to find out. Yeah! Huh, surprisingly deep there. That's kind of exciting. Yeah, I back the drags off at night, put the clicker on. If I'm flathead fishing with J hooks, I put it in free spool with the clicker on. But with blues or flyheads with circle hooks, I leave it in gear. And so that way they'll pull, 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 and it'll load up, the hook will set, and then the bolt, and you'll hear the, so I don't know, probably four, five, six pounds of drag pressure. So, you know, five pounder, you won't hear it, but anything of size, you'll, they'll pull some drag. If you hear a single click, means there's probably a fish on. Here's dinner. Okay. Loin there. I thought they were back straps. Actually, my dad packed these, so I'm not entirely positive what we're working with. But that appears to be a loin. That appears to be a back strap. A lot of meat. It's a lot of blood. Show them in. Well, I'm gonna leave that loin intact. I think I'll cut this into a few pieces. We're not gonna go hungry by any means. Probably gonna, I'm gonna try to cut that piece off. I don't know what you call them. I don't remember. There's a name for it. I mean, there's a name for everything. But I'm going to cut the silvery stuff off. The chewy stuff. I think that's going to be... I'll do one more piece. Got her trimmed up. Not great, but good enough for who it's for. That's me, in case anybody was wondering. Hmm, do we have any? Eh, there's a little bit in there. Doesn't get much more simple than that. Meat, a little seasoning. Throw it on a cast iron. Seasoning of choice tonight is uh, Omaha steak seasoning because uh, my grandma got me an uh, Omaha steak package for my birthday pretty darn good birthday present and they sent this with it back to me being cheap I mean there's no point wasting it 
If anybody's worried about cross contamination with the uh, the knife, don't worry, I wiped it off on the bait towel. These are gonna splatter and pop and do all of them things, but they're gonna be good. That I am confident in. I'm more confident in the food being good than I am catching fish where we're at. I don't know, I figure we'll eat, sit back, relax, get lazy, and then knowing myself, I'll get restless, and then if we don't catch anything, in the meantime, I'll look for the next spot. She got hot fast. I'm ready for the sizzle. It's sizzling. I think we're gonna go medium rare to rare. It's pretty hot. It's gonna have a nice, nice sear to it. It's one thing I really appreciate about the cast iron. Grilling them's good, don't get me wrong, but Searing them on cast iron gets that nice char that I really like. We have lights for rods. I should probably turn that on. Mm, accessory. There we go. Huh. Flipped the lights on and we're actually getting a nibble. It is funny how you don't get any bites and as soon as you just start cooking, then you get bit. It wasn't a good nibble, don't get me wrong, but it is a nibble. Oh yeah. I'm definitely going to do more than nibble on these things. Thirty more, well, I say thirty more seconds. That one, done skis on that one. We'll see where it's at, and that'll tell me what we're going to do with the rest of them. Deer definitely cooks a little different because it's not very fatty. Well, that is as rare as rare gets. I like it. If you're worried about worms or anything like that when it comes to eating wild game, I probably already have worms, so it's whatever. I think the hardest part about eating the steak is... Uh, Letting it rest when you take it off the grill or skillet or whatever like that. At least I find that difficult because right now my mouth is watering. Okay, call that one done. Call them all done. How's this one look? Oh, that is... That is definitely Spencer Perfect right there. You know how I said it's hard to let it rest? Man, that's good. You definitely don't have to leave it this rare. But, uh don't cook it medium well that is the key to deer in most wild game from what I've found not that I'm an expert but that's one thing I've noticed it's not a ribeye but it's pretty darn good kind of wishing I brought the heater at this point in time because it's going to get down to like 28 degrees tonight but I'll survive uh, you any good? He wasn't good enough to pull any line off. He might just be, you know, sluggish. Well, there's a little line coming off. He's freaking out. He's spunky, I guess you could say. You got him coming our direction. I don't think he's like super big. And by I don't think he's super big, I can promise you he's not super big. But we, we got a fish. 
I have a feeling it's a flathead. It's probably not, but I just kind of have that feeling. See tangle? Yeah. Oh, my feeling was correct. I don't know why. You got like lassoed. Okay. You actually have the hook in his mouth? Yep, he had one hook in the corner. It was the Duble hook rig. Alright. Well, this little bud ain't going to win us any Snickers bars, but he is fun. And I appreciate flads all the time, but to get one in the winter makes them even more special. Even even down south like we are right now, uh, they're, they're not as common during the winter. But yeah, pull her down decent, fought decent, and made me smile. We'll let him go. Au revoir, little bud. See ya. Yeah, still think. Oh, easy. Still think we're gonna end up moving. Give her five more minutes. Here's we have. Like I say, it appears we have another probably small flathead. Ooh, you pop off. Yep. Huh, where'd that hook end up? Weird. Not that weird. That's what happens with flatheads. And circle hooks quite often. That's why I don't care for him with flatheads that much. Yeah, he bobbed her good a handful of times and never pulled it down. Probably because he was too small to pull it down. Or he was really cold. I'm betting too small though. Thinking. Hmm. Do we go? Do we stay? Do we go? Do we move? There's the channel ledge out there, and then the shallow flat behind the boat, and both bites have came on the ledge. Both bites probably flatheads. I don't know, we'll stay for a little bit longer. I think we have one. Oh yeah, there he is. He is squirrely. Not big enough to pull drag. I'm just lucky I was halfway paying attention. Not paying that much attention, but halfway paying attention. What do we got? Channel? <laughs> yep. I think that tells me what kind of spot we're in. Not that they won't mingle together, but I haven't had success catching big blues in water where you're catching channel cats. Of any size, really. Like, caught channel cats this size and good flyheads in the same spot, but not blues. I don't think it's... I don't think it's that they don't get along or anything like that. I think it's more they just prefer a different kind of habitat. Okay, bud. See ya. That was fun. The boat is not parked. Where I parked it. <sighs> we had any bites, I slept through them. I think we're gonna. I need to get my teeth brushed. And then sort things out. 
Coffee. Coffee's getting ready. I gotta wipe off the windshield. It was frozen on the outside. Well, it's kind of frozen on the inside. Hey, we'll be able to see. Sweet. That's kind of helpful with driving. Not a 100% requirement. But if the captain can't see, you have to appoint a lookout. That is the rules. Another reason I should have brought a heater. Oh well. I think she's warm enough for me. Going the instant coffee route, so. No need. Just need warm water. This is uh, Alpine Start. It is. It says it's instant coffee that actually tastes good. And I will confirm, it is instant coffee that does actually taste pretty good. Mm -hmm. Well, that's very bitter. If you're going to rip these open, I wouldn't recommend using your mouth. Yep, learned my lesson. Okay, that looks kind of weird. Now it looks less weird. Yeah, that white is kind of funny. I suppose it's just foam, but it's still weird. These are the odd things I fixate on and talk about before I've had my coffee. Suppose we should go find the fish now. <sighs> Feel like I'm ready for anything. We're gonna sway all over the place. I've just accepted it. It's not ideal. But the catfish don't care what the boat's doing as long as it doesn't pull your baits all around. And anyone that hits it good is going to pull that slack out pretty quick, so I'm not going to worry about it. And we'll just see what happens. That's encouraging. Unless he, he just come off. That's not as encouraging. Why'd he come off? Oh. We had a tangle. Where did he hit the bobber? I don't know. Oh. That was the double hook rig. And it just got cut off. That was weird. Maybe I shouldn't use double hook rigs on anchor. Things get twisted and whatnot. I mean, I didn't even have much pressure on him. Felt like it cut. Weird. But encouraging in a lot of ways. Yeah, I definitely need to get those out of the way today. Um, it's not something that happens a whole lot, but tried a different leader line. Um, not because what I was using wasn't good. It was just what I had laying around at the house, but it's more subtle and I think, yeah, I think it got kinked because um, it was a double hook rig. We might have one. Yeah, we do. Pull it down there, bud. You just, it's a problem with anchoring in lakes. You uh, don't know what way they're gonna run. 
I don't think this is a particularly large fish if he's even still on there. He is not. I keep getting tangles. Probably should quit messing around with these long leaders. Unless I'm gonna drag. It's also another bite on the little bait though. Maybe I should just drag. Quit screwing around. Man. Maybe I should quit whispering to myself. Feels awkward. <laughs> I got a pretty good idea of what I'm going to do tournament day, but basically I'm looking for a reason not to do it. And I am not finding a reason not to do it. But I do think I'm going to cook up the rest of that deer. Definitely can't think of a reason not to do that. Well, he didn't run over my planer boards, but he's a little closer than I care for. Well, whatever, I guess. I'm actually seeing some fish. Some pretty nice fish. Oh, here come some more waves. Maybe we'll get us a barge bite. Steaks are seasoned. Just waiting on the skillet to get hot. We'll throw a tester on there. Nope, not hot. <laughs> okay. She's set on max heat. She'll get going. Yeah, there we go. Ain't gonna cook them very long, but I am gonna cook them hot. Maybe not quite that hot. Well, those are more than done enough for me. Got kind of distracted. I don't think they're going to be overcooked, but too bad. Yep, that's my kind of cooked. I think, uh, I think I'm about over this dragon thing. I need another, I got a second anchor, but I only got one rope, which works fine in shallow water, but we're in deeper water. So I think I'm gonna run over to Seth. I know he's got an extra one. I'm gonna eat this first though. Pretty dang good. Day one of two pre-fishing is done. I didn't find anything that I'm super excited about, but checked a lot of boxes, which is part of the process too. Seth found some good stuff. He brought his boat down because he's gonna fish after the tournament too. So he was out and about looking around. I found some stuff a couple weeks ago that we'll check out tomorrow and hopefully we get a pattern put together. I was thinking about it. You know, to win this tournament is something special. Like, historically, the the top, like, winning weights or even the top five would mean I'd have to have my best day ever out here to be in that talk. But, hey, that's why we fish, right? It's going to be some big fish weighed in. Hopefully by me. Well, we had a nice refreshing early morning and i'm officially caffeinated and after some driving around some looking around last day pre-fishing's here we uh we found some stuff yesterday and when i say we i mean seth so thanks for finding some stuff yesterday no problem and, and we're gonna try to expand on it from here and i don't know just keep looking around like we got an idea of where to start Hopefully we don't suck. And my camera just died. <laughs> it's cold enough also where I have a hard time like processing thoughts and things like that. 
Where did them big ones go? Where did I need the mapping on? Because I had them marks. There was a pile of them, like probably 20 of them. Yeah. They weren't babies. You're a big baby. That's true. So far, things are not the smoothest. Uh, batteries keep dying in the camera, and uh, this wind is making boat positioning a problematic, but we have found some fish. We'll just see if we can figure out how to make them bite. And it's gonna start with boat control. Well, the good news is it'll it'll be windier tomorrow. From a completely different direction. Right. Which actually, that part might be beneficial, because then you. Southeast is that way. Yeah. So we can drag straight into it. Right. Hopefully. Hopefully. You want your board out further? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, one big difference between tournament fishing and just YouTubing and just fishing, like a day like today, I wouldn't be out here. It'd be an edit day. Right. Be nice to get one and get off of this program. Oh, there's a bite. We got a bite? Yep. My far outside board. The yellow or green? The yellow, far outside. Okay. You know what, maybe if I eat a... Skipjack? A skipjack. <laughs> I was thinking a protein bar. <laughs> maybe they're waiting for me to be like at higher mental capacity. Yeah, there we go. We are too like up and uptight and moving around and stuff. We need, to, we need to relax a little bit. I mean, this wind... Oh, it is dying down, I think. It is. Yeah, it was pretty blustery this morning. I 100% agree with you though. Like, seems like you catch more when you're more relaxed. Right. Well, hopefully this isn't an indication of how our day is going to go tomorrow. Right. It's been a grinder, and we've actually had baits in the water a fair amount. Now conditions have been tougher to, you know, present baits the way that. We'd like them to be presented, but still like to scratch out a few fish. We're not hitting our best stuff, or what we hope is our best stuff, to leave it for tomorrow, but this ain't going, anything going on. We got about three more hours, two and a half, three more hours. I don't think we fished any of our best stuff today, do we? No, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Unseasonably cold with the northwest wind doesn't usually yield great fishing, regardless. Well, that got exciting really quick. You made the boat start peeing. <laughs> yeah, keep, keep duking it out with him. It's funny, we go to your your spot where you had success just to make sure. First you goodbye to success? Yeah, first goodbye to the day. Oh yeah. You might have nailed it about twenty too. Yours. Well, I think this confirms where we want to start tomorrow. Let's get out of here. Okay. Three. You want to mark it real quick? Mm -hmm. well, I'll do it on my head unit. What I think we have there is a. It'd be our over. <laughs> well, he, he might be he close. Might be Let's him, just out of curiosity. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Thirty-four and a quarter. I think he's an under. That's the best oh. under you could ever ask for. Wow. 
so this tournament how it works is you get two over 34 inches one under 34 inches he's literally a 16th under 34. so he'd be the perfect under well yeah i mean he could be fatter but you couldn't ask for better lengthwise for better under than that. if you get one then be very happy about it right well get him back in bud we're gonna reel up and quit sore mouth in these fish Make a long story short, we didn't we didn't catch anything. I mean, the conditions were kind of ridiculous. The wind picked up and the waves got big and we were post front and you know, it led to 60 of the best catfish anglers in the field not weighing a fish and we were amongst that group, but you know, we just didn't game plan very well, didn't think through things very well and you know, when it's Good weather, you can stumble across some fish, but when things are tough like it was that day, sometimes you don't stumble across fish. And you know, good judgment typically comes as a result of bad judgment, and I made some bad judgment on that day, and I'm gonna learn from it. I'm not a very fast learner, so I don't know how long it'll take. Probably a long time, but I'm hoping I can put together a system of, I mean, life's kind of just a bunch of systems and. I can put together a system that functions for tournaments and have some success down the road. But that day we didn't have much. That's just the way she goes. But I hope you enjoyed the, the video and I, I hope you enjoy the journey of me trying to figure this tournament thing out. I don't like to lose and not only did we lose, we got our teeth kicked in. So I'm going to try to do something about it. But thanks for watching. I really, really, really appreciate it. That means a ton. Hope you catch a giant.